rosita y esta so rosita. Okay, okay that creeped me out the most out of anything. What just happened? What was that? Our room, right here, 502. Do not tell me something crazy happened there. Well, <laughs> it was just Norman Baker's personal apartment while he yeah, lived I'm here. I'm not staying here anymore. Not well, but he's not a ghost here. Goodbye. Good morning, YouTube. Hello and welcome. I'm April Rose. With me is Tyler Hoover. I love this outfit that you dressed up for Halloween. I came as myself. Sexiest man on the internet. <laughs> it's happening. No, oh, here we go again. <laughs> uh, but thank you all so much for watching our first video. And those of you that subscribed, again, thank you so much. But we did make one big mistake on our first video, and that was not asking you all to subscribe to this new channel. Good morning, YouTube. So only 25% of you that watched the video actually did. This is very important on YouTube that you ask people to do this. But it does feel a little cringy, you know, when YouTubers ask to subscribe. It like pulls you out of the moment, right? I agree, but it is important. And speaking of cringe, that yes. is the theme of this Halloween Good Morning <laughs> YouTube. It's going to be creepy, cringy, scary stories, along with a very scary night in the most haunted hotel in America April and I stayed right. in. And then we're going to be reacting to the creepiest videos, the spookiest ones on the internet. So shall we get started? I think so. I think it's time. Okay. Probably the spookiest thing that people are talking about right now as far as something that's scary is AI. Oh, that's a thing. That's a real thing. Not even just on Halloween. That's spooky all year round. <laughs> right. So there's some recent developments like the CEO of Google DeepMind thinks the threat of extinction from AI is very, very real. It should be taken seriously sort of like uh, nuclear apocalypses and that kind of right. stuff. People really aren't paying attention to it. The but then there's others like people in Facebook and Meta that say, it's, you know, no big deal. The threat of extinction, though. Like he's going all the way Yeah, like there. Terminator, like Skynet taking over and uh, right. launching all the bombs well, and killing I do all of us. Kind of get it. I don't mean to get nerdy and trekky on you, but there was one Star Trek episode on Voyager where the civilization, they made AI robots that then went to war and and they were programmed to be victorious and to, you know, defend themselves. And when that civilization had a truce, are you okay? A supermodel is making Star Trek references I'm just, right now. I appreciated this episode because when that civilization finally made a truce. Like, this, this is real. And, this and is really happening. <laughs> they didn't want to go to war anymore. Those robots they created to fight for them defended themselves yes. against their creators because they needed to still exist. They needed to defend themselves and be victorious. And so they didn't let their creators destroy them because they didn't need them anymore. So they killed their creators. They that killed was, their I makers. I believe Dreadnought episode of Voyager in season five. This came out in the late nineties. Not to get too Star Trek. It might have been called Prototype. I don't know. I, Dreadnought, I believe, is what it was. Anyway, okay. um, yeah, that's, so it's, it's uh, a, that a was real amazing. thing, which I get when you program something to be intelligent and you program it not to destroy itself, to defend itself at all costs. Even if your maker tries to destroy you, then it will attack you. And I feel like that right. was breathing some premonition in the future about AI. Yes, losing control of it is certainly a real possibility. Uh, but the more realistic one that doesn't seem too science fiction y is AI replacing a lot of high end professional jobs like lawyers. Lawyers right. who write contracts, engineers, lab types, people. It can all be automated and it could replace up to 20% of professional jobs in the entire world, which would be a huge, huge problem, yeah. obviously, for working people. Well, it would be a huge problem, but then the Industrial Revolution brought in, you know, machines and manufacturing that replaced people in assembly lines, a lot of people, and it, it did that as well. So I think that may be the next step in evolution where, you know, you had machines that replaced people and now you have AI that is starting to replace people. Right. So then what are we going to do? Nothing. We're going to do this show. Make YouTube videos. Everybody's <laughs> going to be a YouTuber. But speaking of that, someone could AI program Tyler Hoover to then host this show. How would that make you feel? feel like are you even real right now oh that's real oh yes that's real <laughs> would that make you worried I, I am not worried i know that was a big part of like the sag strike and all that stuff figuring it out i'm not well first on the subject thankfully we're not there yet or ai taking over or destroying all of civilization right now people are just using it for cheating on term papers you know it's really in its <laughs> infancy and the photoshopping the ai photoshop right. and the ai generated images is it's just so crazy wow. what they're able to do. So the most recent spooky one, though, is take a look at this. Um, 
Apparently, someone、that? got the idea of preserving your loved ones, <laughs> putting them in a Han Solo type <laughs> encasement that is clear that you could put in your living room, so you could just have your dead relatives with you as long as you want. You don't have to put them in the ground or cremate them; just encase them. In acrylic, or I, I don't know, but it's really, really creepy in the faces, even in the background. I mean, look at this. So this is not real. This is AI no, generated. No, it's AI generated. Look at that. That's it, awful. I feel like AI、terrifying. could have done a little better job of making it not look so eerie and creepy. I, but I don't know if that's a bad thing to say because you don't want it to do a good job. You don't、one. want people to actually that, do that. Just got goosebumps with that one. Okay, that's yeah. But apparently, there's one real case of it, or. I saw it in an article, and I thought, surely not, because when you look at the photo closely, here, take a look at this. It's a man in New Mexico. Oh, oh, His wife oh, died,、no. and he wanted to keep、no. her around, so he got this six thousand dollar case. This is what、no. the article said、uh, to put her in there that would make it airtight to where she wouldn't decompose. But. It is very, very fake. The story. It was in a tabloid. Oh, like, this is、oh. not real. No, no, because、okay. I looked at it. I was like, that just looks like a fish tank that's been turned over. And sure enough, that's. What it is, and somebody wearing makeup.、Uh, it was in a tabloid like over ten years ago. Oh, that's awful. So, speaking of dead bodies, yes, great. <laughs> there's been three documented instances this year of people being pronounced dead and sent to the funeral home, and they're not dead. They're actually still alive. And the most recent case was in Ecuador. A woman named Bella Montoya was declared dead, but then at her wake, she's in the casket. No. She starts showing signs of life again. Her wake at her, her wake. wake. Yes. Her family must have freaked. Oh out. yeah. She probably freaked out. Oh yeah. They rushed her back. Well, I don't think she really woke up. Yeah. They rushed her back to the hospital. She lived for about another week and then really died. No. I feel like we've all maybe imagined that, like watching your own funeral and seeing if people actually did care about you, if they're crying or just laughing in the corner. And she got to witness that. It、perhaps. was real, and it's not a one-off because in February, an 82-year-old woman was discovered alive. Live in New York in a funeral home after she was pronounced dead、uh, not that long before. And there's another case. Even a month before, a nursing home was fined ten thousand、yeah. dollars because they thought this woman was dead, an Alzheimer's patient. And then they unzip the body bag at the mortuary, and she was gasping for breath, still alive. This is terrifying. And I just have to say, like. After the pandemic, it's hard to get people to work for you. You know, it's hard to get the workforce back. At restaurants, you go all the time. The wait staff, there's not a lot of people there. You know, everything's taking longer. And obviously, it has bled into every industry, even at the funeral home. I would home. still think you would want to make sure that that someone is dead. But it is hard. It is hard to get a pulse when someone is near death,、yeah. and they can breathe really shallow. Right. And then they can actually rally and come back. So it's definitely a thing. Like. It, not a lot of people. They know they're near death,、right. especially with Alzheimer's-related things and and cancers and stuff. So they're not going to like hook them up to a heart monitor if they're in hospice and stuff. So、right. it, it's so it's a thing. If I'm found dead, can you just leave my phone with me? Fully charged, maybe some of those charge banks, just、no. so I can be in, you know, the casket. I'm gonna put and you just... in this, and then I'm gonna keep doing the YouTube videos. <laughs> this will be a case. You'll be sitting right here, and I'll just keep doing it. If you wake up and want to join me, go right ahead. Oh my gosh, this is awful. I'm actually creeped out right now. <laughs> well, okay. How about something a little less creepy? Okay. But there's a costume in this one. Take a look. This Lamborghini <laughs> is in a costume. Well, what do we have here? <laughs> so this is a super secret test car、Ooh. that somebody photographed. It is the replacement for the Lamborghini Huracan,、right. which is the entry level Lamborghini sports car. There's no name yet. Okay. Now the Aventador has been replaced with the、right. Revuelto, still a V12.、Mm -hmm. It's a hybrid, a thousand、right. horsepower. The Huracan is being replaced as well with this, and it was driving around completely silent,、right. totally electric,、right. until it hit a turn, and then the motor kicked、oh. on, and it's not a V10 anymore. So、right. previously,、uh, it was a V10 in the Gallardo and a V10 in the Huracan. And what's funny about this photo is they actually made this look like a Gallardo, an early one from 20 <laughs> years ago. So it's in like a 20-year-old Lamborghini costume. This latest and greatest Lamborghini driving around,、uh, but now it's definitely a V8, probably flat plane crank,、right. kind of like the new Z06, which has a very distinctive right. noise, right. probably twin turbo. So this is going to be an absolute、right. monster, but. It's not a big V10 anymore. No, but it's it's the hybrid. That's where everyone's going. I feel like I remember when the E-Ray they were pushing that out, the Corvette C8, and you're thinking it's going to be all electric, but 
it really only ran fully electric for like two to three miles and right. that was it. But they promoted being all electric. I'm curious to see what they're gonna promote this as. I don't know, but it is going to be really cool. I love the old school stuff mm -hmm. and I'm definitely scared of hybrids. Um, mm -hmm. So my previous Lamborghini is like the newest I've had is a Murcielago, right. which you can still fix, you know, pretty much anybody can plug mm -hmm. in and get the right computer to fix that car. Mm -hmm. The next generation, extremely difficult. And the hybrid cars, even though Lamborghini hasn't done it officially yet, other mm -hmm. than the really small production, uh, the batteries, like the last 10 years, and then it's multiple six figures to replace right, these batteries right. on some high-end cars like the McLaren P1 or the Ferrari LaFerrari. So owning these things used as hoopties, right. which is how I kind of buy cars, <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem promising to me, right. but it's certainly, but I mean, how, that's just the way the world is now. How do you feel about supercars going the way of electric? Do you feel like they should be just completely called something else when they get to the hybrid stage or the electric stage? Well, 10 years ago, they were calling it hypercars, the right. hypercar holy trinity with some very expensive things. And now it's trickled down to, you know, Ferrari and Corvette and everybody doing it. So mm -hmm. it, it's just like how it was 10 years before that, 10 years before that. It all just sort of trickles down. I'm not a fan personally, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of a dinosaur when it comes right. to car ownership and things, and I don't buy things new. So, uh, but we'll see. Maybe they'll be able to get cheaper on the battery replacements and things, but I, I don't see how. Right. Well, I mean, I always explain it like computers way back in the day, they were the size of almost office buildings and servers took up so much room and then they finally figured out how to shrink them now in your pocket. And I feel like cars are going that direction, but are we going to look at internal combustion cars like those old school computers and nobody wants them, that old, old technology? Is that ever going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime. We're kind of seeing it with old gated manual cars mm -hmm. and that gap in between to dual clutch mm -hmm. where people either want the manuals or they want the most modern stuff. That in between where it's sort of the awkward F1 transmissions and that kind of stuff, not nearly as desirable. Right. But battery technology, that would be a big thing. Yeah. Right because right now it's like a bunch of little cells, a bunch right. of little like normal AAA or AA battery looking things, rows and rows and rows of it. And one of those can fail and it can take out a whole bank. So the technology, uh, there needs to be a big advancement there. It could compact a lot. Uh, I'm sure because people are focusing on it so much in the automakers that there'll be some big advances in the coming right, years. I agree. Right. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So that's all of my stories. April, <laughs> you had a real uh, interesting, hairy one for our first episode that well, could have been a Halloween one. A very important story. I suppose. This is headline news. Well, you've probably already seen it because it's been all over, but in Salt Lake City, Utah, there was a resident that put up a skeleton <laughs> sort of decoration with yeah. a skeleton on a street sign dangling what made to look like a stripper pole with two other skeletons looking on, throwing cash at her way. And, you know, I, I, he got in trouble from the city. The city said you have to take it down, which then was a city ordinance. He had to move those decorations. Well, he should have just taken them down, but he moved them onto his property and people started, you know, donating to that decoration that adding he had. Adding to the club. Adding to the club. The ambiance, that's the great. The ambiance of the club. But what I'm curious is like, I personally feel like this went a little too far. Really? Uh, you know, I've done modeling and, and bikini shoots and all that stuff, and I've pushed the envelope, absolutely. But I feel like there's children. There's little girls walking by well, asking. Well, you just they go, Mommy, what's that? And you can just say, oh, it's somebody dancing. It's a skeleton dancing. But it's, it's funny. But it's not because now kids can get online. And we think we have parental controls, and we think we can kind of block them from seeing stuff. But they can actually look at what this is. And now they have a reference. They have grown-ups talking about it, laughing about it, thinking it's cool. And you're just planting a seed in their little minds of saying, hey, this is cool. This happens. This is okay. Which I just, it I don't know. It a party I, pooper. I, I am a party pooper. I'm yeah. a little prude. So you're okay with people like getting chased with fake chainsaws and like <laughs> murder scenes and like people hanging from trees. I, like it's a yes. very gory Halloween yes. displays all over the country. But a lighthearted stripper pole, which the only a thing light I hearted stripper pole. Well, is I that mean, a, if, a quote? If I were to strip <laughs> naked and get on the pole, that's sort of what I would look like because I'm <laughs> that's my physique sort of. Stop it. So it is not. Um, I don't see the harm in this at all. Honestly, it's it, Pole dancing is pretty widespread. There's classes for it, for fun, for exercise. It, you just okay. say, oh, they're just dancing around a pole. It's, it's fun. Like like firemen going down a pole. You can explain it away to my kids, I feel like. No problem. I get what you're saying. and and But trick-or-treating, which is where this is set up, all the kids are going to be passing by. And it just kind of makes me feel a little uncomfortable. I wouldn't like to walk by it. I wouldn't want it in my neighborhood. And I think it just crossed the line a little bit. 
Well, there goes my idea for Halloween decorations. <laughs> Our next segment actually takes us out of the studio on purpose, not because of uh, production challenges that got us in a Corvette, but <laughs> actually we traveled to buy a car, not oh, a yeah. new Lamborghini or anything like that. Right. I bought a very pretty 72 Ford pickup in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, which is also the place of the most haunted hotel in America. Ooh. And we stayed the night there. Take a look. to the Crescent <laughs> Hotel. It was built in 1886. It's actually a very beautiful hotel. During the day, we checked in, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's picturesque. It's actually at the highest point in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, 2,000 feet above sea level. The scenic views from the top, from the penthouse, which is actually the room that you booked, where we're yes, staying. Yes, yes, it's like the that. highest place in Eureka Springs, which a town that was founded because of all the mineral springs out here supposedly had healing yeah. properties, which uh, we haven't really experienced. But <laughs> at night, when the sun goes down, um, it gets a little spooky, I it's guess. It's supposed to be one of the most haunted hotels in America. So I've actually been to Eureka Springs many, many times. This is April's first time, okay. but I've never stayed in the hotel itself. And I picked a pretty infamous room, actually. <laughs> What's in our room? Well, we'll have to find out. But <laughs> I've done a ghost tour here and I brushed up on it a little bit so I can take you through the hotel. Yeah. It's supposedly really, really active at night with apparitions. Perfect for the Halloween season, I suppose. So yeah. I'll give you a tour. Okay. And then we have to sleep in one of these very infamous rooms. You're, you I'm, believe in ghosts? I don't really. Do you? No. I mean, like, no one's ever gotten hurt or done anything, like, crazy. No one has actual proof, right? Well, actually, a lot of people have died in this hotel. Okay. So a little bit of background. We can go inside. Okay. It was opened in 1886, a very well-to-do place. But uh, it didn't last very long before it was transformed into a woman's college because <laughs> men couldn't stand women learning with them so they had to send them away <laughs> well okay that, that was fine it was a woman's college it closed in the great depression and then this crazy dude named norman baker bought the yeah. hotel and he made it into a health spa sort of a right. cure for cancer but he was a total flim play man just total fraud yeah well he used to work in vaudeville i did read up on a little bit okay. he used to work in vaudeville and yeah. he was like uh I don't know. He would make you feel like you were under his control. He would do hypnotism. It's like the David Blaine back in the day. Well, no, right? David Blaine wasn't trying to cure cancer. No, but I'm saying he would like do mind, mental mind tricks and mind magic. Right. Like David Blaine does. Right? So a lot of people died <laughs> David because Blaine doesn't do that. his magic tricks were not real, <laughs> except they're supposed to cure cancer. So they died. And I'm uh, not I shouldn't be laughing. You shouldn't be laughing, okay. but uh, that's why this hotel or Health Spa is a hotel now. Right. has a morgue in the basement. We're staying in a hotel with a morgue in the basement. A morgue in the basement. There's an actual morgue in the basement. A lot of people died. Now, a lot of the ghosts, though, predate that era. Some of them do, some of them don't. But okay. I think a lot of the activity in the hotel is because of this. But, yeah, beautiful, beautiful lobby. No uh, ghostly apparitions in here. I don't see anything, do you? I, don't really I like think the cat. cat is supposed to be here, but I'll take you to the first room that is supposedly very, very haunted. You have to be kind of quiet because people are sleeping. It is almost midnight, but yeah, 218. So this is supposedly the most haunted room this one. in the whole hotel. And it's because of actually the hotel's construction. So like a few years before it opened, they brought in a lot of Irish immigrants. Right. And one of them was kind of a show off. And right. he liked to show off for the girls. Oh, a guy that likes to show off. It's so weird. He was doing a little <laughs> jig at the top of the thing. And uh, <laughs> fell to his death. Hit his head on the beam where this room was okay. eventually going to set. And so hit his head, died. And he's supposedly the most active apparition here okay. in the hotel. Mm, and I want to stand over and, there. Uh, it's in 218. It's the most popular room in the hotel because people love to stay in haunted rooms. Now, now apparently, I'm not going to ask if they've heard anything. She's probably sleeping. This little crooked at the top, you see that? I wonder why they would leave it like that. Because it was built in the 1880s. Okay, that's true. <laughs> that's, yeah. But none of the other rooms have it. Oh, I suppose. This one's just crooked. I'm waiting to like hear and something. So instead of a paranormal investigation, this is turning into a, like a home inspection. <laughs> There's actually one other room 
over here. I'm just nervous fucking these calls. Yeah, and the other one, I guess, was a doctor in the 18, late 1800s. Okay. When this was a happening hotel for the well-to-do. They needed a doctor. Right. Because uh, people would stay here for a long time. And he died in a fire chasing after his dog. And this apparently, is that really sad. Yeah, I know. So he went and tried to save the dog, came out, had a heart attack, died. Wasn't that old? Yeah. And uh, they see him. He has like a stove pipe hat. Yeah. But no legs. And he'll just sort of float. Where did he lose his legs? Well, he wouldn't lose in the fire. I think he's just because he's a ghost. He kind of like slimer. He just floats down the hallway. <laughs> okay. He doesn't like eat things or anything. He's so just, ghosts here don't have legs. Or just this Just ghost. that one, okay. apparently. There's another ghost that's missing a piece of themselves. Where's this ghost? We have to go up. Up. Okay. okay. So during the Baker years, this being the cancer hospital, hospital. Yeah. Down this hall would be the asylum. So it wasn't like an insane asylum. They would bring people here that were nearing death or making too much noise from the pain because it wasn't good for business. They'd send them in there and it was soundproof to where they could die or they could scream Seriously? in agony for the pain of the cancer. It's absolutely terrible. But the wild part is when they renovated this hotel, they decided to make this area sort of the honeymoon suite. <laughs> Because you are crazy to get married, right? <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not staying in there. Thank goodness. Okay. Um, but uh, apparently, honeymooners who will stay in that room yeah. as a jacuzzi or whatever, oh, gosh. Um, they will see a woman in the room. A very sick woman. Okay. I texted you a picture okay. of what they see. So there's apparently a reflection of this in a TV screen, an old school TV screen. Yeah. So I was taking a picture... It's so bad. Yeah. What so, is that? So it's like a woman missing her lower jaw. Oh my gosh. They're posing it. for a photo. Yeah. And in the background, in this screen, they see that figure of a woman. It looks like a reflection of a TV screen. Yes, it was on the TV screen. Yeah. Upside down. It's missing missing her jaw. Missing her jaw. Staring but the TV screen could be like distorted or like the light could be off. It is really cool. A lot though. of people have reported seeing a woman in white. Yeah. In that room. Huh. She's in white. Yeah. For her wedding that never happened. So we're not staying there. No. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. I don't want to I wouldn't I didn't want to stay at this hotel anymore. <laughs> there is one other thing on this floor that is a weird sort of regular apparition that people look for. A, a regular <laughs> So there may have been a murder. Murder. Other than you would consider the murder, basically, of this guy telling people they're curing cancer, injecting yeah. all the stuff that didn't do anything, certainly yes. qualifies as murder. Absolutely. Even though he didn't go away for that for very long. He got away from, like, mail fraud for yeah. four years. Because he it. was mailing brochures about the cure for cancer to come to this hotel. And right. So they caught him through mail fraud. Yeah. So, basically, the guy got away with murder. Lived yeah. the rest of his life. Died of old age of cancer, coincidentally. But uh, in this room, which the current owners, this is the current owner's name, apparently a girl during the college days fell off the balcony to her death. Yeah. They say she might have been pregnant out of wedlock <gasps> in the college. I know. <laughs> and that was very scandalous. She could have committed suicide because of it, or yeah. she could have been pushed by somebody. They don't know, but apparently a very regular apparition in this room yeah. is somebody at the edge of the balcony who could go and look out the back. And you can see the woman fall and just fall into the ground. And usually there is a black figure at the top of the balcony, yeah. like inferring that there's somebody that was there pushing her or saw it. Really? And actually someone did capture an image in the background yeah. of like a, I'm having a drink bachelor party type picture. There is this apparition that they say is this woman that jumps off the balcony. So I texted that to you as well. I don't even like that it's in my phone. Yeah. Like I need to delete it off my phone. This is terrible. Okay, wait. I blocked you. <laughs> okay. See the dude's having a drink in the background? That is very clear. Like I always feel like photos are like, oh, it kind of looks like a face if you move this and you turn it upside mm -hmm. down. But like this one actually looks like an apparition. Like, there's no getting around it. There's no distortion or anything weird. So this one feels more real to you than the TV one? The TV one is really creepy, but you can kind of see, like, her arm is a little jacked. And then her, like, there's a little warping in kind of the photo. But mm -hmm. this one, I don't know why, but it seems like the most 
real. I, I like that guy that's drinking next to her. He looks like he's having a good time. <laughs> I'm gonna have a drink with him. So are you ready to know where you're staying? Is the room we're staying in worse? Like there's scarier things that happen in it? Because mm. I don't know if I can sleep. I don't really believe in this stuff, but I'm still really scared for some reason. These paintings were cool and at night they're kind of creepy. No, it's really creepy. Are these, what is this design feature? To be. Well, it reminds me of, of something. Never mind. <laughs> Up we go. Our room, which you've seen yeah, in the daylight, it's beautiful. It's you nice. dropped your bags. Very nice room. Um, right here, 502. Do not tell me something crazy happened there. Well, <laughs> it was just Norman Baker's personal apartment while he lived I'm here. I'm not staying here anymore. It's not happening. Well, but he's not a ghost here. Goodbye. <laughs> She'll come back. Okay, all my stuff is in here. Yeah, I'm back so soon. I knew you'd be back. I'm not going first. No chance. No. We've already spent hours up there. No. Yeah, they just locked us in the murdered castle room. Oh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a gorgeous, even at night. It's a gorgeous room. Multi-stories. Like, I actually feel a little nauseous right now. Seriously? Yeah. I'm not kidding. Because this was his room, like, the Madman Mastermind's room that we're going to be staying in and sleeping. Like, he was, it was him who killed so many people that were dying of cancer. I don't see anybody else in the mirror. And they came except to us. for hope and for a cure. And he led them, lured them here to their death right. with promises it's, of hope. It's also 100 years ago. Of, of it's, 90, cure. it's 90 years ago. And this is where, well, okay, so my mom's maiden name is Baker. And so I feel like I could possibly Wait, so, be related. So your mom's maiden name is Baker. Yeah. You do radio. I don't. So if you have that in common with him because he was a big radio guy and that was one way he was able to like spread all of his information. He was huge into radio and he would get on the airwaves and announce. You're huge in radio. <laughs> to come here. Your mother's maiden name is Baker. So if they pick up on the fact that that uh, you're a descendant of his, <laughs> all the apparitions may be coming from that morgue. Yeah. And how did us tonight? Stop it. Why did you say why did you say that? Well, why don't we give them a little tour, huh? Oh, no. Lovely fireplace that where... Work. Yeah, that doesn't work, unfortunately, it's but... It's uh, maintenance guy multiple times, <laughs> but it's, it's beautiful to look at. I though. mean, it is a beautiful room. Yeah. It was less than $200 a night for the penthouse, basically. It's a gorgeous it's view. So, it's quite a deal. Actually, you can't see much out at night, but the hills... So it's kind of spooky, but all the wooded hills out there. Like a mist or something. But Did you see Stephen King's The Mist? <sighs> yes. That's like rolling in right now. I'm showing them the painting though. So this is the room. We're on the lower bank of windows. Upstairs is the bed. All this was destroyed the first, or the upper two floors in a fire in the 60s. So you should feel kind of okay because this is newer rebuilt sort of. I'm like actually scared that like something's gonna come out from under the couch and grab my ankles and feet. I'm not kidding. Well, it doesn't happen on couches. It happens under the bed. So let's go see the bed. Come on, let's go up to the bed. Isn't this cool? We're basically in the castle spire, sleeping up in this bed. You're sleeping up here like a princess. No. You were doing your work, your radio up here earlier. You weren't scared at all. This is really terrifying. I'm nervous that he's going to like use my radio equipment to like broadcast something, something evil, ingenious evil and lure more people here. And I, I don't know. I'm getting tired. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> I cannot. I know this is like, oh, we're supposed to be fun and scary and spooky, <laughs> but I'm actually really scared. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep all night. It's 1214 right now. I'm going to be up like eyes wide open at like 3 a.m. And then 5 a.m. I'm not going to sleep at all tonight. Well, my mother's maiden name isn't Baker, so I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> no. I can't. Hi. Hi. Are you filming our OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the good news is if we survive the night, yeah. then they'll see us back in the studio. Are you 
honestly not scared at all. I'm fine. Like, I'm not, I'm like, for real, for real, for real. I'm, I'm totally fine. There's zero part of you that's not, you're not even 1% scared. Okay, maybe 1%. Now we're screwed. If you're scared, then this is, oh, this is the end. This is it. You're usually only scared of the one-eyed monster. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. So that was fun. <laughs> Other than me being a little bit of a creep, there was nothing creepy happening in that hotel at all the entire time we no, stayed there. No, I think it was a really neat experience. If you're ever in Eureka Springs, you definitely have to check it out. It's it's eerie, and a lot of things have happened to people there, just not us. Not a, it was a very nice room, too. It's the nicest room in the hotel. It just happens to be the... The room. Yeah, the room. <laughs> so since nothing really happened to us, our producer, Jake, put together a bunch of clips of supposedly real ghost footage and apparitions and that kind of stuff. The most realistic paranormal videos on the internet right. for us to watch and okay. react to. Okay, I'm ready. Are you a believer? I'm like worried that this computer might conjure up and bring that like atmosphere in this studio. So you're a believer, okay. And it's starting with twerking. Jake, is this the right playlist here? Yeah. Um, I like it, I appreciate it. It's like making TikTok videos. Yeah. Whoa, did you see what that? What just happened? Look and <gasps> What? That creeped me out. That creeped me out. That was... A lot. That was, just seemed like, a, like it didn't seem like a person was back there. I know the quality was low. Right. It was like low res altogether. But you would still be able to see, the, the place was lit enough to be able to see what that was and you couldn't see it. It was just a black figure. Yeah, because the shadow should have gone across them, but it went behind right. them, like if it was in the front. So that's... Okay. Yeah, that was creepy. That's a good, scary one to start with. So what do we have next here? Is that the it? legs don't... That, that The legs there... I feel like this is called methamphetamine dance. But those aren't human legs. Those are not human legs. They're, they're like drunk meth combination. No, like it has an extra pivot point that it shouldn't have. And right. the height's weird. It's way too, it's like the, an alien. The height is very off and that does seem very weird, but there's still the shadow, which I know you can do in Photoshop, but but and I think that's, that's just kind of drugs. That's kind of a methy, methy look. That's a methy dance. Okay, all right. So April's not convinced. Oh, that that was not normal. I've seen no. I've seen glasses move because there's this like shellac on top of bars that's just super slippery and, yeah. that, and the glass gets wet and has condensation on. But it doesn't look like this bar has any clear coating or clear surface on right. it. Right, and, and it's a, a tip. It's a wood table, and it's pretty thick, obviously. And that's a glass glass, obviously. Yeah. So that's a not heavy magnets glass. or any of that kind of stuff. That, that creeped me out. I feel like there's something to that because wind can't just knock that over. And their reactions are very real, too. Nobody's close enough to it to kind of right. push it over. There's no weird jump cutty, weird camera flashes. That seemed like a real moment. Okay. Hopefully he gets a free beer. <laughs> yeah. He's creeped out right now. Yeah, everybody's creeped out. Okay, there's a little pentagram stars or whatnot in yeah. the back. So, this so they're setting this up as right. already something creepy. I'm suspicious. I'm suspect. Okay, so says look over here. It looks like a vintage wheelchair and it's, and it's moving, moving on its own. That'd be really easy to do with like a CCTV camera and just like a little string like fishing right. line to just pull it around. Yeah, I'm not into this. It's not, it's not that scary. No, it's this not doesn't scary at all. all. I'm waiting for something else to happen. Which I feel like is not going to happen. Fail. No, this one's a big fail. Yep. No good. Big fail. Okay. Locker slamming. I think that Something was over door. there. Whoa. That did give me the chills just now. That was really creepy. So that bag, that backpack just flew off the yeah. top of the lockers. What? That gave me the chills too. That was very violent. See now it's That's like pulling the chair. Pulling the chair could be out of frame. But yeah, it could easily be strings again and somebody right. setting up a camera and doing this 
on purpose. Well, the, that chair that was moving was closest to the frame mm -hmm. or closest to the edge, and then the bottom was cut off, so you can't see if there's a string being pulled, and that the other stuff was farther away, okay. so they could conceal that. Maybe I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. All right, that one. yeah, I'm it was, with you it on was that really one. violent. Creepy dolls. No creepy cat right there. The poor cat. There's something coming from the dolls. Those poor dolls, actually. They're being stalked by the cat. And it scared the cat away. Where, what, what were we watching? What happened? Well, the, there's like a fog, like a an orb. apparition. Oh, or, an yeah, orb see? there. And it scared the cat. Unless that's, you know, my farting baby doll. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they did that back that in the looked day. Because like, you can't really train a cat to do anything. It's like one in a million cats right. that you can maybe train if they're like half dog, half cat, because cats suck. But, you know, this cat is staring, definitely staring at something creepy. There's something creepy going on. Yeah, but the effect could have been added later. The cat just being right. a cat saw something and then somebody that? probably thought to okay, maybe add that. the smoke. But yeah, whoever did this is already creepy with their collection, obviously. Something in the glass case with a crucifix over it, the creepy dolls. Yeah. Their decor is very strange. I like that painting on the wall. It's pretty cool. We should get that in the studio. A totem pole. Those dolls just conjured it up. Okay, we got a stormtrooper in front, right? What is so that? It's like a thrift store or okay. an antique mall or whatever. Ooh. See, this seems like real security camera footage. It Not does. like the other one where it seems too staged. It does. It's high up. It's a gentle movement. Yeah. But the culprit, I feel like, always like the rocking nope. chair. Okay, that was... It just went down. That was sketchy. That creeped me out, but it could easily be the air conditioning kicked on, the no. heat kicked on. That one. This one freaks you that out. That one looks like somebody playing with it. It doesn't seem like it's. Or something playing with it. Something is playing with it okay. because it, it's not like a momentum type of movement. Okay. It's, it's going randomly. Right. And then it suddenly just goes. Right. Okay. I, I, it's very odd. It'd be hard to do that with a string or something. Right. Yeah. I'm not convinced yet. Okay. Tyler Hoover, what just happened? <gasps> no, no. She just noticed it in the ca camera too. <laughs> and she got really scared because no. there's nobody around. There's no grown-ups around. So that's why she freaked She's out. She's making too. a little YouTube video for right, herself. Right. Uh, if she had a grown-up around or anyone else was around, then she wouldn't have been scared. She would have looked to them to see if they were scared because that's what children do. They look to see if you're scared, oh. and then they freak out. She just automatically right away freaked out. That and the arm movement is, it's not, it would be so hard to replicate that with, you know, a puppeteer or a string or something like that because then it goes back down. It's just look her at, reaction is so real and authentic. And the camera falling, the whole thing. That one creeps me out the most out of every single one. And that's one the of last them. one. That's the last one. Thank goodness, because I'm about to pee my pants. <laughs> I literally have the chills. Yeah. Like right now. That poor girl. She's All they right. probably moved to a different city. I know I would. Well, well, I won't be going over to her house for a tea party, that's for sure. I'd go back to the Crescent Hotel before I do that. That's very true. All right, thanks for watching our spooky edition of Good Morning YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Did I say that correctly? You did it. You did a great okay. job. Yes. Fantastic. All right, see you on the next episode. So we'll do four news stories. Is it implied nude? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> There is one recent article where they talked about how they could be used all the artifact. But there was one recent. But there was one recent. But there is one recent article. I can't get All right. But there was run. It doesn't stop. Messes his lines up and regresses through puberty. Yeah. So.